Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about another statistical inference test known as the chi-squared test and how to carry out chi-squared tests using Python. So in the last lesson, we used the t-test to check whether the mean of some sample data was different than the mean of a population. Now, the chi-squared goodness of fit test is an analog to this one-way t-test, but it functions on categorical variables instead of numeric ones. And it will test whether the distribution of some categorical data matches an expected distribution. For instance, we could use this chi-squared goodness of fit test to check whether some demographic categories at your church or school matches that of known demographic distributions over the whole US population. Now in working with categorical data, the values themselves aren't really of much use for statistical testing because categories like male, female, and other, for instance, have no mathematical meaning. So when we're doing tests dealing with categories like this, they are going to be based on counts within each category, and that allows us to use numbers related to the categories. So to start with an example, I'm going to generate some fake demographic data for the US as a whole and then for the state of Minnesota, and we'll walk through how to do a chi-square goodness of fit test. So we're gonna start by loading in a couple necessary packages here. Again, NumPy, pandas, and scipy.stats, the usual suspects for this sort of thing. And and now this cell is just going to generate some data for us to work with. It's going to create two different tables, a national table, and then a table for Minnesota. So when we run this and look at the results here, we can see we have two different tables of some categorical variables and different counts for each one. So basically it's showing us a racial breakdown of what might be voters in the US and then voters in the state of Minnesota. And we can see there are different counts for each of the categories, and the same thing for Minnesota. So the question we want to ask here with the chi-squared test is, are these distributions of counts across these different categories the same for Minnesota as it is for the population as a whole? And we could look into how we generated the data to actually know for sure whether they should be the same or not, but let's just use the chi-squared goodness of fit test to check whether these distributions across these categories can be considered the same or not. So the chi-squared test is based on the so-called chi-squared statistic, and you can calculate this statistic using this following formula. Basically, you're adding up all the differences between the observed counts and the expected count squared divided by the expected counts. In this formula, this observed count here is the actual observed counts that we saw in our sample. So that's these counts here that we saw for Minnesota. And then the expected counts are the counts we should expect if this distribution of counts across the categories was the same as the distribution of counts across the population that we're comparing it to. So, that, so that's something we would have to calculate, figuring out what proportion of the counts are in each of these categories. And once we figure that out, we could calculate how much we would expect all the counts to be for Minnesota, given how many total observations we had for Minnesota. So we're gonna actually start by doing this chi-squared test manually by calculating it out like this, but then we'll show how to do it in Python faster with a scipy.stats function call. So I'll start by just showing how to do it the manual way. So first we want the observations for Minnesota. Well, that's just the same thing as our Minnesota table, so we'll store that in observed. Then we need to calculate the expected counts, and like I said, that's based on the ratios of counts across the categories for the population. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take that national table, divide it by the length of the national table. This will get us the ratios for each of the categories. And then to calculate the expected amount, we just need to take those ratios and multiply them by our count of observations for Minnesota. So this will get us our expected counts. Now that we have our observed counts and expected counts, we just have to calculate our chi-squared statistic using this formula. So we'll take observed minus expected squared. That's what we did in the numerator. 
and then divided by expected. So that was the denominator. And then this whole thing just has to be summed up. So we'll use the dot sum numpy function there. And that will calculate a chi squared statistic for this situation that we created with these data sets. And we'll just print that out. From this code, we can see this first bit is just showing us the population ratios. And this final number down here is our chi squared test statistic. So 18.19. Now, similar to the t-test, where we compared the t test statistic to a critical value based on the t distribution to determine whether the result was actually statistically significant or not. We basically do the same thing here with the chi-squared test. We want to take this chi-squared test statistic and then compare it to a critical value based on, instead of the t distribution, the chi-squared distribution. And so let's use Python and the scipy stats library to calculate what our critical value is going to be that we want to compare this to, and then use that to calculate what the p-value is for this test, and we can use that to see if these two distributions are actually different across the different levels of the category. So we will start by calculating the critical value. We're going to use a 5% significance level or a 95% confidence level for this. So to calculate that critical value, we can use stats.chi2, which means chi squared, dot PPF. The first argument to this Q for the quantile is going to be 0.95, and it should be noted that the chi-square distribution is one-sided starting at zero, so we don't have something where we're having multiple tails. We're only interested in the top end tail for this, so that's why we are using 0.95 here instead of 0.975 and having a two-tailed situation. And then the next argument are the degrees of freedom. And for the chi-squared test, this is going to be the number of categories we're dealing with minus one. So we had five categories here. So our DF degrees of freedom is going to be four. And when we run this, it will give us the critical value that we're interested in that we want to compare our 18.1 chi-squared statistic to. So we'll, we'll print that out. And then from that, we're going to calculate the p-value. The p-value is going to be 1 minus stats.chi2.cdf. So we're getting the cumulative distribution function. So we're basically saying all the area under the distribution up to our chi-squared test statistic with the degrees of freedom equal 4. So basically that's saying the more extreme our result is, this value will be larger and one minus that value then becomes smaller. So basically the more extreme the result is, we're going to get a smaller p-value. And when we run this, we can see that the critical chi-squared value is 9.48. Well, the one we found, 18, that's a lot bigger than that. So this will be significant at the 5% level. And the p-value is 0.001, so that's a pretty small p-value. It's even significant at the 1% level. So we can be pretty confident that the distribution of counts across those categories is actually different for the Minnesota sample than it was for the population. So in this case, since our chi-squared statistic exceeds the critical value and the p-value is low, we'd reject the null hypothesis that the two distributions are the same and accept the alternative hypothesis that they are actually different. Now, we went through the trouble of calculating the chi-squared statistic and p-value by hand, but of course in Python you can load in packages that will run functions that can do a lot of this stuff for you pretty much automatically without having to do that sort of thing. So instead of doing all the steps we did, we could have instead used the scipy stats function chi-square to do the same thing. We'll show how to do that below. We just want to call stats.chi-square. Then the first argument, fobs, is going to be our observed counts. And then the fx is going to be our expected counts. We've already saved these, so we can just pass those right in. And when we run this, we'll do the chi-squared goodness of fit test, and we'll basically get the same results that we did manually, but now it's just done in an easier way. So you can see the resulting information here. We got the same test statistic, that's this first one, and the p-value should be pretty much the same as the one we calculated. Now in this chi-squared goodness of fit test, 
we were interested in checking whether the distribution of counts across categories was, was different between two different data sets. Another type of chi-squared test you can do is called the chi-squared test of independence. Now, independence is a key concept in probability that basically just describes a situation where knowing the value of one variable tells you nothing about the value of another. That means the two are independent because you can't get any information about one from the other. For instance, the month that you were born in probably doesn't really tell you anything about which web browser you use. So we'd expect your birth month to be independent from your browser preference. The chi-squared test of independence can test whether two categorical variables are independent of one another. This sort of test is commonly used to check whether things like education, political views, and other preferences vary based on some demographic factor like gender, race, or religion. So I'm gonna generate some fake voter polling data and then perform a test of independence on it. So basically we're, we're going to start by generating some data we can use for this problem. So we're going to generate some voter demographic information as well as some information related to the political parties of these supposed voters. And all this other code is just putting it in a form we can work with here. So we'll run this and we'll end up with a data frame here or a cross tab that we can look at with different categories. So here you can see we have some different demographic categories like we did in the first problem, but we also then have them broken down by different political group categories on this axis. And we've also included a column for the totals. So we have row totals for each of the demographic factors and then column totals for each of the political factors. And then in the bottom rightmost corner is the sum of the totals. So that is the total number of records that we have here. Now, I did scroll through it kind of fast, but if you looked at the code above, we did not use the racial demographic data in any way to inform how we generated the party data. So that means the two categorical variables should be independent. That means when we conduct the chi-squared test of independence, we should find a p-value that is too high to reject the null hypothesis that the two categorical variables are independent of one another. If, so for this test of independence, we can use that same chi-squared formula that we use for the goodness of fit test. The main difference here is that instead of calculating those expected counts across a one-dimensional table, we are now going to have to calculate expected counts across a two-dimensional table because we're dealing with the interactions between counts across two categories instead of one category this time. And to get the expected count for a certain cell in this table, you want to multiply the row total for that cell by the column total for that cell, and then divide by the total number of observations in the whole data set. So, so for instance, for this first cell here, we'd take 60, the row total, times 397, the column total, and then divide that by 1,000. That would give us the expected count here in this cell if these are indeed independent. You can calculate all these values to fill in that expected table quickly by taking all the row totals and the column totals and taking an outer product of them. You don't have to worry too much about what that's doing. It's just allowing us to do all those multiplications for each of those pairs uh, quickly. So you can use the numpy.outer function to do an outer product. So we'll calculate those expected counts using np.outer on the row totals and the column totals, and then we'll divide that by the number of observations. We'll, and then we'll just add some formatting and print it out here so we can see what our expected counts are. So now we have a table of expected counts and then we had a table of actual counts above, and we can just use the same chi-square statistic formula as before. We're just dealing with a 2D table now instead of a 1D table. So let's go ahead and calculate that statistic. We're gonna take our observed minus expected, squared, divided by expected, and since it's a 2D table, we have to run dot sum twice here to sum up the whole thing. And we'll run this, and our chi-squared test statistic is 7.16. And now that we have that in hand, we can use the same process we used for our first chi-squared test to check whether this is statistically significant. So, so let's just run through that process again. We'll calculate our critical value with stats.chi2.ppf. 
Again, we're going to use a 95% confidence level. The degrees of freedom in this case is going to be equal to the product of the number of categories that we're comparing across the two dimensions, but minus one for each of them. So for instance, we had five categories on this dimension and three on this dimension and then minus one. So four times two is going to be eight degrees of freedom in this case. We'll print out that critical value. And then again, we'll calculate our p-value with one minus stats.chi2 CDF. We'll just pass in the test statistic that we calculated and our degrees of freedom, and we'll print those two things out. So we can see our critical value is around 15.5, which is a lot higher than our test statistic. So it's not going to be statistically significant in this case. We can tell that also from our high p-value of 0.51, which means we're not anywhere close to being able to reject that null hypothesis. Now again, although we calculated the test statistic and p-value here by hand, you can do the test of independence using a built-in scipy function that will be quicker and easier than this. So that function is going to be called stats that chi2 underscore contingency that will allow us to do the test of independence. And for that, all you need to pass in is our observed two dimensional table. It will calculate the expected values from that and generate all the necessary results automatically. So all we have to do is for the observed argument, just pass in our observed data. We'll run this. And our results here show the chi-squared statistic first. That should match the one we calculated. Then it shows the p-value. And then it will show the array of expected counts here. And that should match up with the one we calculated above. And the result of the test confirms what we already knew based on how we generated the data, that the categories were independent of one another. In this case, with the data we generated, knowing someone's political stance doesn't really tell you anything about their racial demographics or vice versa. So in this lesson, we learned that chi-squared tests provide a way to investigate differences in the distributions of categorical variables with the same categories and dependence between categorical variables. In the next lesson, we'll learn about a third statistical inference test known as the analysis of variance or ANOVA, and that will let us compare several different sample means all at the same time. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.